I don't want to give too much about this away except to say that it will be one continuous performance. It won't be broken into halves. Um, I've seen a version of this and I'm very excited to see how the show has evolved. Would you please welcome Marty Munster and Barbara. Yay! Okay, okay, my name is Brian. I'm here to tell you about my miserable life and my decline and attempt to get back on track. I had a successful corporate career with a salary to match. I had a beautiful wife, Lucy, three kids and a three-legged dog named Roger. <laughs> Things were going well. The kids were in private schools. We had a wonderful home, swimming pool, and enough garden for a herd of bison. We travelled overseas twice a year. This was my life. Who could ask for more? Until I lost my job. They said it was a reshuffle that had to happen. I'm 57 and I'm out of work. I received 25 weeks severance pay and after taxes about $45,000. Our accountant ran off with his lead bookkeeper named Cameron and embezzled all my superannuation. Things couldn't have been worse. Lucy mentioned why don't I try my hand at writing. I always wanted to write. My first novel was a hit. I had an agent, attended book launches, meets and greets, and all the wine that comes with success. My agent obtained a book deal worth a quarter of a million dollars. All I had to do was write five novels. <laughs> this is where things turn into a disaster. I got the block. I got the yips. I couldn't put two words together. I grew a beard, stopped bathing, and I sat at my typewriter every day and pondered. After a while, Lucy took the kids and Roger and moved to a little town outside isolation. <laughs> she left with all the money I had and left me with some small change for the pain. This is now my life. This piece represents my decline in mental health and self-medication. Woof, woof, woof! Stop, 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 you rabbit dog. I'm trying to concentrate. Where was I? Ah, oh, yeah, another drink. Drink, drink, drink till I'm dead. I tell myself, you have to write today. How many bottles do I have? Three. That should see me through to 5 p.m. Distractions. Where do I go from here? Oh yeah, another drink. Was that the telephone? Ring, ring. Blah. My phone just died. Just my luck. Who cares anyway? I have no friends, and my agent gave up me last spring. It's just me and the imaginary dog. Ah, you all thought the dog was real. No, the dog is within me. Yeah, I'm the dog on the shoulder of heartache. I'll leave him outside when I have lady company. Shut up, you old bastard, I always say. Do they hear him too? The neighbours never complain. Shut up, you old dog. Ah, yeah, where was I? Another drink. Yeah, lady friends, 
Not much that these days. I can whack off without the guilt. Just me and the dog. 5 p.m. Today became yesterday and the day before. Did I write today? Where was I? Oh yeah, another drink. Stop that insistent barking or I'll cut your balls off. I am a writer. <laughs> My second piece confirms that I've given in to becoming a barfly. It's happy hour and this bar is empty. Hey Joe! The blackboard says happy hour is between 4 and 6 p.m. What the hell does that mean? One more before the suits arrive. I rest my elbow neatly on the bar, worn from many years of drinking. Hey Joe, you got a pen and paper? I don't write myself a love letter. I used to be like them, you know, the nine to fivers. All dressed up, matching ties and shoes. We all travel on a treadmill of unhappy endeavors. That painting by John Brack, Collins Street, 5 p.m. Tells we were all taxpaying sheep, blindly riding a lost cause. Public transport, the collision of a 7.30 train and a school bus. We all need to learn the lesson of survival. It's okay, Joe. This time everyone survived. Sleep a bit, old fella? Yeah, yeah, I know. Not good for business. The grog sleep shudders your soul. I drifted in and out of consciousness between each gulf. Drifting on the life raft in the rapids. We don't need to think anymore. It's those third piece confirms that I've sold my soul and become morally bankrupt. I'm 62 and this bar is holding me up. I spent more time here than at my bed sit. Life as a bar fly has served me well over the years. I have no friends. My le family left me and took the family dog. I have no one to bother about or care about me. Here I'm lonely, fucking depressed most of the time. But hey, no one cares for me, so what the fuck? Hey motherfucker, what, what's going on? Where have you been? It's been a long time, motherfucker. Hope you don't mind me calling you motherfucker. I can't remember your name. Jono, Rollo, Mikey, Sly. I can't fucking remember. I won't give you my real name. I was always told to watch your back when you're talking to someone you can't remember. They could fuck you over and out. I'll be frank today. What's going on? Been in a slammer for 13 years and three months. I let back into myself. Watch out, watch out, I kept saying. What's your fucking name, motherfucker? What am I do calling this loser a motherfucker? I looked up at him. If looks could kill, I'd be dead now. <coughs> My name is Billy. He had a long worry beard, smelled like shit, probably hadn't showered for weeks. Was he a hitman? Did he kill, rape, fuck over some motherfuckers? I need Jimmy down the old Blarney Stone to be whacked. He owes me 23 bucks. <laughs> what did you do time for? I, I was a hitman, I killed, raped and fucked over a lot of motherfuckers. And I got good out, um, out on good behaviour. Fuck, I can pick him. We, we continued drinking and we became good buddies. Maybe not that close. We'd only been drinking for an hour. I always seen people in their true colours after a few pints. He seemed like a cool guy, considering his past. And the fact he didn't shout me once pissed me off. There goes my pension money again. It's only Friday. You know the verbal diarrhoea you sprout when you hit your limit? 
I told Billy about Jimmy down at the old Blarney Stone, how he owed me 23 bucks and all. And I mentioned how funny it would be to get him whacked over that 23 bucks. We left to each other about 2 a.m. See you next time, old timer. I stumbled home, slept, slept at lunchtime next day. What was it the next? My life consists of weeks of Sundays. I turned on the radio. Golden oldies. I know most of the songs, but I can't remember the lyrics, so what the fuck? News break. Jimmy had been whacked. I stumbled to the dunny and threw out for, threw out for about 10 minutes. What the fuck have I done? Could they connect me in any way? Fucking Billy, he took me literally. I think it's best to move on, keep my mouth shut in the future. I suppose I better clean up my dirty suit and go to Jimmy's funeral, show some sort of respect and all. Jimmy still owed me 23 bucks and look, I owed him nothing. <coughs> I'll decide on my next week of Sundays if I'll show up. I'm going to give up the piss until the next drink. I'm going to sing you a song. It's probably the best hangover song I've ever sung and heard of. 